It's really a privilege to be here today to share a description of our program with the PPMD uh, community. My name is George Mulligan. I am the leader of translational medicine at MITRE Bridge. Uh, my only disclosure is that I'm an employee of MITRE Bridge. We're a biotech based in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, a quick summary, some of you may have heard of MITRE Bridge, but many of you probably have not. We're a young biotechnology company, uh, recently formed, um, focused on treating uh, serious diseases that have mitochondrial dysfunction with a series of compounds that can enhance mitochondrial function. We have a small team based in Cambridge, but we have a global reach and we have a biotechnology company's focus on making progress every single day. And so one of the cornerstones of our team has been a partnership with Astellas Pharma, uh, a traditional Japanese-based company, which is now actually a uh, global pharmaceutical company. Um, and that has allowed us to develop a strategy from the preclinical stage all the way through to early and late stage clinical programs with the, the unity of a biotech together with a pharmaceutical company. So a few words about mitochondrial function. Um, mitochondria are vital organelles in all cells in our body. Um, and this is a cross section of muscle shown here. And you can see that the, the muscle fibers are in fact surrounded by mitochondria, which in this micrograph is a large organelle with these membrane folds. Um, and so these folds are the structure on which all the chemistry that generates energy from our food occurs. So these reactions occur on the mitochondria and therefore provide energy and ATP to the nearby um, muscle cells. And so in addition to regulating energy production by um, consuming foods that either consist of sugars or fats, and I'll come back to that, the organelle regulates um, cell death functions and also cell-to-cell -cell communication, largely through regulation of uh, calcium levels. Um, so mitochondrial dysfunction has been reported throughout various um, uh, Duchenne scenarios, and there are some references summarized here on the bottom right, including a, a recent report um, from the Children's National Group, which summarizes a lot of this work. But you'll notice that the, the research goes back 30 and 40 years um, to the very beginning of descriptions of the basis of muscular dystrophy, and mitochondrial dysfunction has been reported throughout this scenario. In short, there is a poor utilization of fatty acids um, as a fuel source in the mitochondria of uh, Duchenne in both skeletal and cardiac muscle. There's also links to inflammation and increases in cell death that are result from this and effects also on reduced muscle repair. And so in the end, we have a reduced ability to work for long or even in some cases moderate periods of time. So there is reduced endurance as part of the, the phenotype, um, the clinical manifestation of Duchenne. So a bit about a, pro, a molecule and a um, protein called PPAR delta. So this protein was um, shown to regulate mitochondrial function in skeletal muscle. This was a series of breakthrough research um, experiments done by Ron Evans, who is a MITRE Bridge co-founder, um, who works at um, uh, the Salk in San Diego. And their group has shown that PPAR delta activates a gene expression program to turn on many proteins that activate and improve mitochondrial function. So PPAR delta itself, if one can modulate it, it doesn't have to have an effect in the cell on its own. It in fact triggers many other proteins, dozen or so, that have this mitochondrial effect that increases the use of fatty acids as fuel. And you can also even see the observation of new mitochondria being formed. So this has dramatic effects in, um, in muscle tissues, but those improvements are not limited just to muscle. Um, there can be benefits in other tissues that have a high energy consumption, and in particular in the cardiovascular system and in the respiratory system. So I want to describe to you a molecule that we refer to as MA211, um, which very selectively binds to PPAR delta and modulates its function to enhance mitochondrial activity. 
So this is a small molecule compound. Um, it's given once a day orally in all our preclinical studies. Um, it's, it's PK characteristics, it's behavior in animals, mice, rats, and primates, um, is, has been very consistent and well behaved. So we anticipate continuing once, uh, once a day oral dosing in our phase one program. Um, I'll describe to you studies that we've done preclinically looking at DMD patient cells and then MDX mice. Um, and we feel that these are complementary approaches to understand potential benefits in, in Duchenne. Um, and clearly, as this has been a, a theme, is that these compounds and this mechanism acts independently of trying to restore dystrophin. So its action won't be um, uh, dependent upon some mutational spectrum of the dystrophin gene. We expect to be able to enroll patients of any uh, mutation type. Um, I'll come back to the status of it at the end, but we have submitted our IND to the FDA, and we will be beginning uh, clinical development um, this summer. So an example, I'd like to go through some of the preclinical data that we have fairly quickly. Um, this is an example of some of the work done with patient cells that were provided into a biobank. Um, so this is an example of cells from a 17-month-old DMD boy. And we can treat these cells with 211. And what we see in this assay is just the increase of the expected genes that are regulated by this protein. Um, and this happens at a very low dose. And um, we see then this effect leads to um, an increase in mitochondrial function. So fatty acid consumption goes up, which leads to more, more ATP and energy. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll show you a few data snapshots, generally with a summary here and then the data below. Um, and so importantly, we were able to get other cells from other um, uh, DMD donors where we see a similar effect. Gene expression goes up in these patient cells and there's increased uh, consumption of fatty acids. Um, before going on, I'll, I'll pause here just to say that these experiments directly depended upon a DMD boy uh, consenting to a biopsy and allowing those cells to be used for research. And, and dependent upon that boy and their family, allowing that those cells could be used for research and not just at the hospital that they were being biopsied from, but at other centers and be put into a biobank so that anyone in the Duchenne community could access them in order to understand potential therapies. Um, so I just want to acknowledge and say thank you to the, the boys and the families who participate in this kind of research and provide the foundation for everyone to go forward. Um, so that's a quick summary of the work we've done in cells, a snapshot of the MDX model. We've, we've talked about this extensively in this community. I'll just mention that there are mitochondrial defects in this model. And as you know, these animals have a skeletal muscle defect that occurs early in life, and then later in their, um, in their lifespan, there are um, pulmonary and cardiac abnormalities that occur more slowly. So we've done experiments as shown here in which young mice are treated with 211 for five weeks. It's an oral dosing scheme. Um, and then we'll study both their tissues and their endurance. And so a snapshot here shows that there's widespread muscle damage and necrosis and inflammation can be detected um, in these MDX animals and that this is um, significantly reduced upon five weeks of treatment with 211. Um, a median across a group of animals, the, the, um, the muscle damage goes down about 55%. Um, so this is encouraging. We've gone on with the basis of this mechanism to look at these animals' endurance, which is shown here. So the same animals were acclimated to running on a treadmill before they're then um, run till exhaustion on this treadmill. Um, and we can quantify how far they ran. So in this case, there's just as in humans, there's variation with this performance of this test. Um, and so the, the, the black bar here is the median. And in, in, a, in a control group, you can see that the MDX mice perform much worse in this running assay. Um, and that the addition for five weeks of 211 treatment um, significantly increases their ability to, um, to, to run in this endurance assay. Um, it, the performance of the MDX treated with vehicles running about 700 meters in this study, and it goes up to about 2,100 meters um, with five weeks of treatment. Uh, so we've also, in a separate series of experiments, first allowed the animals to age 
until about 10 months of age um, until you can start to then do um, echocardiography and see defects in uh, cardiac function. Um, and so what one can see, the dark line is the MDX animals here over the subsequent five months. Um, and you can see there's a steady decline in cardiac function. Um, and then we see that upon treatment in the food now for five months, um, that treatment with 211 actually um, halts this decline in uh, cardiac function. Um, so again, additional information that we can have more systemic effects on, on multiple tissues. Um, a quick snapshot of the data, a, a basic muscle damage biomarker of CK, as we know, whether the treatment is short in young animals or longer in the older animals, CK levels also are reduced upon treatment um, with 211. So uh, suggestive of healthier uh, muscle tissue in, in these animals. So this is a snapshot of what I've already gone through. I, I won't go through each point. I'll just highlight that we take an approach that focuses on what we can see not only in cells from patients, but tissues of animals, and then what are the important functional readouts that we hope can then translate into um, benefits for DMD patients. Um, Last year, we described some of the information around reducing inflammation with this molecule and reducing um, diaphragm fibrosis. I didn't show any of that today, so I'll, I'll draw your attention to that. And then to just wrap up, a, a cartoon here which tries to show one part of the mechanism of this molecule. So the mitochondria is producing uh, energy for the cells, and there are really two fuels that are available for the, the muscle to use, that is sugars and fatty acids. And muscle typically will use up sugars, and in this illustration that's shown as um, yellow, whereas the fatty acids are in green. And so typically muscle, particularly when there's stress or activity, can actually consume a lot of the sugar that's in the system and actually deplete what's in the bloodstream and what other tissues have access to, and you have fairly low levels of sugar there. In fact, by selectively improving mitochondrial function via this mechanism of P-part delta modulation, you can increase fatty acid oxidation and you can start to consume some of the fatty acids that are available in the tissues of the muscle as well as systemically and you end up with an effect where there's therefore more sugar available systemically to support the, the health of various tissues. So this is a direct mechanism but with, with a complex readout. Um, the effect therefore can be to preserve glucose during periods of exercise which can lead to in increased endurance as we're showing. And then there are other benefits around reducing inflammation and, and, uh, and fat levels. Um, so a, a snapshot there. So to summarize our, our preclinical data, this is a novel mechanism to activate cellular pathways that improve mitochondrial function and have an effect in impaired muscles um, and perhaps other tissues as well. Um, we see activity in DMD patient cells and the MDX mouse model. Um, this increased energy production is vital. Um, we see functional effects though, and that's really important endurance. We see effects in cardiac tissue. These are all done at doses that are well tolerated in these animals and in other toxicology studies. Um, so the advantage again, an, an oral agent that can address potentially multiple symptoms and then while working independently of the strophe mutation type, there's also potential to combine with other agents that are being developed um, in this field. So where are, we, where are we clinically? Again, I come back to our partnership with Astellas from, from the very beginning. Um, you know, sort of the checklist of, of where we're at. We've completed all our toxicology studies. We've submitted the IND. Our drug product, our capsules are ready to go. They've passed QC and stability testing. The IND's filed. We're, we're certain that we'll be treating patients in phase one um, this summer. That phase one will be in healthy volunteers. Um, we will characterize the drug levels in the plasma of these patients. We'll characterize the safety in, in these um, subjects so that we can also go in and define biologically active doses using translational biomarkers and we'll understand when we're activating mitochondrial pathways in these subjects. And therefore, when we go into a Duchenne population in the next study, we'll be able to start with doses that are quite reasonable and informed by our translational science. 
The first EMD study we project to begin in 2018. Um, so that study is, is coming shortly. We'll again focus on safety. We'll be looking for preliminary signs of activity. Um, the plan is to go into an ambulant DMD population and then progress in other studies into non-ambulant populations, which may also have the potential to benefit. We won't focus on any particular dystrophin mutation group. And I'll just add that this has been a dialogue over the past few years between us and uh, scientific and clinical experts in the community as well as the patient groups um, that are you know, here today and, and patients themselves. So we'll continue that dialogue throughout the development of this compound. Uh, so that's it. I just want to thank you for your attention. Um, if any questions.